on Sportsnet. The last two years have been strange years. We did what had to be done to keep the game going. And Lightning has struck twice. And the Tampa Bay Lightning are back to back Stanley Cup champions. We want to get back to complete normal. Uh, this year, we're hoping that most, if not all, of our teams will have full buildings. We hope we can get all our fans back. I think that would be the best thing. You guys are talking about it. Guys are excited. 16 to 20,000 fans every single night. They're loud and they're passionate. They'll be going crazy, so we're really excited to have them back. We miss them a lot. It'll probably feel a little bit like your first game. Just feeling that energy again. I think that's going to go a long way for us. We are proud to give you the Seattle Kraken. I'm definitely more excited to get back to some normality and, you know, travel. Going into different cities each week, uh, trying new spots for dinner. I think more time on the road with the guys. I think we're looking forward to that. The boys are fired up. Ready to get it going. Let's get it. It's going to be fun. Can't wait. We've returned to a sense of normalcy in the NHL, set for a full season. Teams returning to their division. Some fans seeing hockey live for the very first time because Scotiabank Arena will be packed for the first time in 582 games. And as per tradition, it's the Leafs and Habs in the season opener. As we welcome you to Scotiabank Wednesday Night Hockey. Hi, everyone. I'm Carolyn Cameron. How are you feeling? Excited? Hopeful? Maybe if you're like me, a tiny bit nervous. All of that's because of expectation. Expectations that weren't met by the Toronto Maple Leafs last season and were far exceeded by the Montreal Canadiens. And while we don't want to dwell on the past, it's important to acknowledge it as we forecast what's to come with the panel. Elliot Friedman, Cassie Campbell-Pascal, and Kevin Bieksa. Kevin, what do you expect starting tonight? I think Montreal's leadership group has a huge hole in the middle of it right now. Who's going to step up and lead this team this year? Ben Sherratt, Josh Anderson, uh, Joel Edmondson, or maybe they bring in Ted Lasso. I don't know, but somebody's going to have to step up and lead this group. How about John Tavares? You know, this game probably has a little extra special meaning. You know, he couldn't finish that first round of the playoffs last year, obviously with the injury. Nice to see him come back, have a really good preseason, but you know he, he wants to get it going for the Leafs tonight. Uh, one Ben Sherratt reference so far tonight. <laughs> Look, I, I, one you know, of it's game one, but I'm very curious to see Toronto. The organization has tried to send a message. We have to have a greater sense of urgency this year. You're playing the team that embarrassed you last year in the playoffs. How do they come out? And since we're keeping track the second Ted Lasso reference it smells like potential wherever you are in the league enjoy this coming up next it's puck drop between Toronto and Montreal next on Sportsnet it's been a long year there are things you never got to say but we won't let me that way I'm not gonna lie I'm glad we're both here Stay
it's time to meet your 2021-2022 Toronto Maple Leafs. Please welcome your coaching staff, video coordinator and statistical analyst, Jordan B. Video and coaching coordinator, Sam Kim. Goaltending coach, Steve Breer. Your assistant coaches, Dean Chanel, Spencer Carberry, and Manny Malhotra. And the head coach of your Toronto Maple Leafs, Sheldon Keith. Not in the lineup for tonight's game, from Omsk, Russia, number 65. Ilya Mikheyev. From Kristianstad, Sweden, number 37, Timothy Lilligren. And from Scottsdale, Arizona, number 34, and alternate captain, Austin Matthews. And now, please welcome your Toronto Maple Leafs players. From Tonka Bay, Minnesota, number three, Justin Hall. From Woodstock, Ontario, number eight, alternate captain, Jake Muzzin. From West Vancouver, British Columbia, number 15, Alex Kerfoot. From Thornhill, Ontario, number 16, alternate captain, Mitch Marner. From Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, number 18, Michael Amadio. From Mississauga, Ontario, number 19, Jason Spezza. From Orangeville, Ontario, number 20, Nick Ritchie. From Newmarket, Ontario, number 23, Travis Dermott. From Scarborough, Ontario, number 24, Wayne Simmons. From Canaan, Czech Republic, number 25, Ante Kasha. From Ostrava, Czech Republic, number 35, Peter Mrazek. From Port Huron, Michigan, number 36, Jack Campbell. From Uppsala, Sweden, number 38, Rasmus Sandy. From Vancouver, British Columbia, number 44, alternate captain, Morgan Riley. From Youngby, Sweden, number 47, Pierre Engvall. From Scarborough, Ontario, number 58, Michael Bunting. From Yurikov, Czech Republic, number 64, David Kelf. From Chatham, Ontario, number 78, T.J. Brody. 
from Stockholm, Sweden, number 88, William Nylander. And from Oakville, Ontario, number 91, your captain, John It's your 2021-2022 Toronto Maple League. A clean slate on a fresh sheet of ice. What can be better? The Leafs and the Canadians set to meet for the 21st time in 2021. Game one of 82. You may have saw Austin Matthews a moment ago looking stylish as always, but not on the ice. If you missed it, you will miss the first three games of the season, at least still recovering from offseason wrist surgery. But Toronto will have Mitch Marner in the lineup here tonight after a brief scare yesterday where he left practice early for Montreal. No Shea Weber, no Carey Price for the next little bit. But Jonathan Drouin is back, and they will see the likes of Christian Dvorak and David Savard make their Canadians debuts here tonight. 135 days since these teams met in Game 7, one that was no question the toughest that this Leafs core has faced to date. And had Mitch Marner saying in the aftermath, at the end of each year, we are sitting here feeling awful. That night, however, kickstarted the Canadians on a wonderful ride to the Stanley Cup Final, but ultimately coming up short. A tough pill to swallow, as Brendan Gallagher put it back then, to get all that way and to come up empty-handed. So both of these teams, for very different reasons, had to find a way to pick themselves up off the mat this summer and maybe look for a little inspiration along the way. Well, for Brennan Gallagher and his family, it was all about the Olympics. He loved watching Damian Warmer dominate the decathlon. His mom couldn't get enough of the Canadian ladies lighting it up in the pool, and they were up early on the West Coast to watch the Canadian women's soccer team capture the gold medal. Ditto for Morgan Riley, who has lost count of the amount of big-time goals that Marie-Philippe Poulin has scored over her career. He loved the success of the Canadian ladies over the course of the summer. As Leila Annie Fernandez reminded us, fight for your dream. Both sides now ready to continue theirs here tonight. Here's Mike Ross. Accompanied by the Toronto Police Chief Ceremonial Unit in the singing of our national anthem. time in over a year and a half a full house at Scotia Bay the old rivals face off in a playoff sequel first of 82 back in the Atlantic Division and at the outset of a new season all hockey fans wonder is this going to be our year and the starting goaltenders for the season opener without Gary Price to start the season the Canadians will lean heavily on Jake Allen who last had over 40 starts three years ago, did not see any action in that phenomenal Canadians run to the Stanley Cup Final. And at the other end, Jack Campbell gets his first NHL season opening night start. Campbell will share the goaltending duties, as you saw, with Peter Mrazek, who's scheduled to go tomorrow night in Ottawa. Greg Simpson alongside, and 
opening night and the jitters or the excitement you can feel it doesn't get you absolutely and i think fitting that the fans here in the stands get an opportunity to sing the national anthem and get this season started crackle in the building and christian dvorak the newest member of the montreal canadians great to see jonathan drew in on his flank josh anderson out there as well and john Tavares back on the ice for the maple leafs with Mick Marner and the newcomer Nick Ritchie. Here's a chance, big stop, Campbell early. Another shot by Dvorak, and what a flurry. Josh Anderson scored 10 seconds into a preseason game, and the Canadians almost did likewise in this one. And what a set play off of this breakout is watch the middle of your screen. Kulak just jumps up on the play. Here's the bank pass, and what a save by Campbell. Came out aggressively, tracked it across, and that frenetic start, Kulak just trying to blast that one through Campbell, and he came out and shut the door, but there's that second chance. Richie got enough of the stick of Anderson that didn't allow him to get that second shot where he wanted to. Well, now that got our attention, didn't it? Now Morgan Riley, the longest-serving Leaf, starts Toronto back pass on the right side and just offside at the Montreal line. As Kasha was taken into the end boards, and David Camp in to discuss that along with Josh Anderson. Yeah, you mentioned Anderson. Hey, you think of these two teams playing together. Anderson has that ability early to surprise you with a little bit of speed. He ended up following up, but you know, there's for Dominic Ducharme on the back end to have Kulak playing what could be a really big role with him. We know Shea Weber's out. You know Joel Edmondson's out, so Kulak gets the start, and he almost starts this game with a goal. And Gerard will be paired with newcomer David Savard, who was on the other side in the Stanley Cup final, in fact, assisted on the series winning goal in game five. Here's Jake Evans on the line. The pass in front, and that goes quick high as Savard gets an early look. A couple of glorious chances for Montreal in the opening minute. Now Michael Bunting has got it. Unable to clear, it's kept in at the line by Yoel Armia. Gamble out of the net, and T.J. Brody's got it, and the Leafs will try and settle things down as Montreal starts to change, and now the Leafs will do so as well. Riley ahead, and breaking his Marder. Marder fired it, and that went off target stick side. Good look for Marder in the early going. Now Suzuki and Caulfield with Tyler to Foley. That would sticks to Campbell. How do you like it so far? Yeah, you love the start. You, you can get a sense from both these teams and both these coaches saying the players are ready to get going. And here's another play in the neutral zone, a turnover right there that creates the two on one and another defenseman jumping up. We saw Kulak at the one side. That time it was Savard. Marner coming in from the side. He had to fully back playing defense. Might have been able to make a move on him. Instead, the high shot gets grabbed. Suzuki won the face off. Kulak sends it around. There's Jeff Petrie, the lead horse. A couple of the Clyde Sales missing this year with a Shea Weber, and at least for the time being, Joel Edmondson. Now John Tavares over the line. Looks that pass looking for Marner. Broke it up just inside the Montreal line. And the Canadians will get control. Petrie with 10 points against the Maple Leafs in 10 regular season meetings last year. Michael Amadio is on the ice. In some circles, a bit of a surprise to make this Leaf team at the expense of Adam Brooks, who's now a Montreal Canadian, picked up off waivers, but not in the Montreal lineup tonight. Here comes Jason Spezza. That's a hit, trying to connect with Amadio. Alexander Romanov to the line, and now it's Chris Weidman, a newcomer on the Montreal blue line, paired with Romanov. You just get a sense of the tempo, don't you? The, the players in exhibition, not nearly this kind of intensity, and battling for pucks, lots of wide open play. Christian Dvorak, a centering pass that hopped over the stick of Drew, and this line for the Canadians has been together since the outset of camp. Drew had shot block, got it back, reloads, loose it front. Anderson stop, and that's another big stop by Campbell early with Josh Anderson, the Burlington native in the neighborhood. Boy, Chris, you mentioned the first time for Jack Campbell that he has started 
game number one of a season and right now he's been the busier of the two goaltenders but does a heck of a job just battling through the traffic in front not only the Montreal Canadiens in front but now you got Sandine battling with him Dermot can't get the stick of Anderson but an excellent play by Campbell to get that pad across and make that second one Anderson had the the icebreaker in the first game of the playoff series between these two teams Nick Suzuki scored the first goal of the regular season between these two teams last year Anderson's got it can't clear David Kemp gets it back and into the corner for Ingball who had a strong camp here's a chance to catch and he whipped it wide Morgan Riley who won it for the Leafs in the season opener in overtime last year Plays it in behind the Montreal net, and now it's Savard with an outlet over Riley and back into Toronto Ice. You see two shots early. You got Marner trying to go high blocker side, and that time Pasha tried to go high the other way. And I wonder if that's sort of the read on Jake Allen here early on for the Leafs. Dietri had a bounce off traffic behind the net, though in front. Here's Jake Musson. Michael Bunting played it to the front. Blocked there by Petrie, and away goes Evans with an outlet for Armia. Back to Jake Evans, the third line center for the Canadians after a good camp. Evans spinning in the corner. A centering play, Gallagher right on. And the rebound is dumped out to center. Montreal's had their looks and six shots in the opening four minutes and change. Justin Hall works his way to center. He'll send it down the ice. Savard back there for the Canadians. Tied up by Tavares. Richie took a bump. Brody moves up. Brody deep in the corner, and now Tavares is on it. Trying to come out in front. Centering pass off the skeet to Savard, and the first penalty of the night is going against Montreal. After a couple of shifts in a row where they've been back and hemmed in their own zone, there the least four check creates a little problem. And for Sherrod, he had control of the puck. Once he loses it, it's just the stick into the arms of John Tavares. And that was made note early on by the officials that hooking and cross checking were going to be a little bit more under the microscope. Boy, a pretty frenetic start, don't you think? Both these coaches have to be saying, okay, the guys got the rust off. They're glad the training camp's over. But it's been the Montreal Canadiens that have the best chances to this point. Speaking of the microscope, this Toronto power play has been under it. Here's Spencer right on, and Jake Allen will hold on. Well, why it's under the microscope is, man, was it on fire. They scored goals in 11 of the first 12 games last year to start the season. Those numbers are pretty hard to handle, 43-plus, but you can see the decline, and most importantly, in May, and then Chris again in the playoffs, just three goals in the playoffs, 13 and a half percent. And when you lose the last three games, or two of them in overtime, that one extra goal might have been the difference of getting the Maple Leafs into the second round. And the Canadians had the best penalty killing unit in the Stanley Cup playoffs last year. They killed 56 of 61, 91.8% on the penalty kill. Here comes Marner, Tavares. That's slowed up by Savard. Tavares trying to get it back against Paquette. Good keep at the line by Riley. Fencing fourth. There is Arturi Lekkonen. Marner across and Paquette with a good stick. Otherwise, Jason Spezza would have had a look. Yeah, good puck battles there, though, on both sides. You can see three Maple Leafs trying to gain that puck to get back under control. And a couple of good stick battles there by Montreal to clear. Leafs did not score a power play goal in their last 14 home games of last season. Rasmus Net Sandine now out there along with Michael Bunting and Richie. The shot goes wide. And here Engvall with three goals in the last two preseason games. Back to Sandine. Across Kasha. His shot deflects off the end glass. Engvall brought it down, but the clear by Christian Dvorak. One shot for the Leafs on the power play with a half minute remaining in the Sherratt minor. There's a second unit that has three brand new players to the Maple Leafs on it. So a little time to get some chemistry there and try to find a little cohesiveness to make the play. And 
you know as we talk about the power play for the Maple Leafs and trying to keep the consistency, you're going to have to change. And there was Bunting and Engvall, as you mentioned, who did a good job. Spencer Carberry doing a good job early on here of just trying to set a foundation in place. But Chris, let's face it, when you're missing Matthews, it sort of changes your overall perspective of how you'll deal with it as the season clicks along. Eight power play goals in the preseason for Toronto. Running out of time on this first advantage. Riley will bring him back in. Just the one shot on goal so far. Tavares. A little speed wobble there as he sends it in deep. And Sherratt gets set to return. So Ben Sherratt back on the ice. And he got the puck to Toffoli. Coming late to Suzuki. Here's Suzuki. And he got spun around as Camp came back defensively. Nick Suzuki with that new eight-year, $63 million contract in his back pocket, signed yesterday. Here comes Cole Caulfield, dash again. Great save, Jack Campbell. Chris Cole Caulfield surprised a lot of players last year at the end of the season with his speed. You shouldn't be surprised at it now. He cuts in the middle, a backhander that Campbell able to hold on. Turning point of the series, down three to one in overtime. 59 seconds in, Suzuki makes it a 3-2 series. Now, Kotkaniemi at 15-15 of game six. And then this one, the backbreaker, as Gallagher gets the first goal of game seven. And the Montreal Canadiens find a way to come back from three to one and catapulted them to the Stanley Cup final. We all know the disappointment and thanks for the Toronto Maple Leafs. But the difference of those games. The Maple Leafs were down two goals in games five and six, came storming back to tie, but those overtime goals were the difference maker. Jake Muzzin not in the lineup for game seven, injured in six. Here comes Anderson. Josh Anderson threw it, scores! There's the first goal of the new season, and it's Jonathan Drouin! Kind of a fitting one-two punch there. Drew and all the troubles he had last year, stepping away from the team. One of his biggest supporters was Josh Anderson, both emotionally, physically, helping him back. But it's a turnover here by Muzzin. Now you've got a two-on-one, and how about the patience of Anderson? Just waited till Hall committed himself and went down. On the side, Campbell expecting shot, has one knee down, and there's a tap in for Jonathan Drew. And what a great story for him. Standing up for himself, there's the smile that you know, many in his family and friends were worried they wouldn't be seeing. And those two, what a great start to the season for them. Just two goals for Drew Ann last year. His final game was April the 21st before having to take a personal leave. And he opens a new season and at 7.22 of the first period here in the season opener. Can't help but wonder if the personal relationship between Anderson and Drewan is one of the key reasons why Don Ducharme kept them as a line and tried to support each other through this. All the talk of Drewan was just the great attitude he had in camp he came in shape, but you know that feeling must just be incredible for the young man after what was an incredibly difficult season last year. Face off to the right of Jack Campbell. It's been a red hot start for the Canadians. And Drew and cashes in on maybe their fourth or fifth really good scoring chance of the opening eight minutes. William Nylander's on it. Best of the leaps in that playoff series last year. Shot Allen knocked it down. The puck goes bad and wide of the net by Kerfoot on the doorstep. And Got another penalty, an interference call he is coming up, and it looks like it's going to be Romanov. Well, Bunting trying to get inside position, and Romanov just forgot about where the puck was. He just turned away and was focused solely on the body in front. A couple of cross checks, and it's this at the last minute as they go after each other, and that one at the end ends up putting the arm up. So, second power play already here early on for the Maple Leafs trying to tie this game. Jason Spencer to take the draw along with Nylander, Tavares, Morgan Riley, 
Spencer down low. Mitch Marner in the bumper spot. New position for him. The power play right there. The Stopped by Allen as Marner gets a look. You could see that the eyes of the Montreal Canadiens knew where that was going, and it made a difficult shot for Marner. He had to reach back a little bit on his back foot. Wasn't able to get that one up and over the pad of Allen. Hard to believe Marner, fourth in the league in scoring last year, did not have a regular season power play goal. A shot right on Allen, and Evans there to clear the rebound. Yeah, you think just 14 power play points on a power play that started looking like it was just going to dominate the league, and you look to try to make a difference there. 72 games since Marner scored a power play goal in the regular season. That's and Tavares trying to get over the line, and that was stopped up by Petrie. And Riley re-racks Tavares along with Nylander. Sends it in. Arturi Lekin in there for Montreal. Kept in at the line. And now Marner for Sandine. Rest for Sandine. Part of the second unit. Marner back to Sandine. Jason spets a rink wide. Nylander trying to give it back to him. Off the skeet to Lekin. Battle won by Marner. But there's Kulak to clear it away. Under a half minute remaining in the penalty to Romanov. Up back to Engball. Kasha available. Andre cashes in. Pass for punting. And now Sandine with the shot that hit a leg in front. Engball's got it. His centering pass. Richie a whack at it. Engball punting. Sandine off the ski to punting. Engball again. Scores! Season and he has tied it here in period number one. Pierre Engvall on the board. Well, you think back to last year, Engvall was one of the guys that Sheldon Keith said he got to play better. You have to be able to contribute more. And as you mentioned, the last two games of the exhibition season, he showed that kind of finish. He's got his head up the whole way, good traffic in front. Nice job by Nick Ritchie, though. Look at the eyes of Allen trying to find that through a maze of people. It went through Evans, it went through Ritchie, and right past the blocker. So Engball with his fourth goal now in three games, but none bigger than one here on the power play in regular season. So 10-13, the time of the tying goal for Pierre Engball. Exactly two minutes after the penalty, and it will be ruled an even strength goal. It doesn't pad your power play stats, but you get a plus. Probably better for the player. Third foot across, TJ Brody moving back in. Here is Suzuki sending away Caulfield. Cole Caulfield firing it to Jack Campbell able to get the glove on that and hold on. Jonathan Drouin opens the scoring for Montreal and a reply from Pierre Engvall here in the first period. Last season he began skating again in late July and it was after one of those early sessions he told his agent, I forgot what it was like to have fun playing hockey again. Those close to him believe there is an element of calmness to him that wasn't there before. He is in a good place again and his reaction after scoring the opener here tonight said it all didn't interest. Kyle, I also love what he said. Uh, I'm not shy about talking about it. I'd like to help others, and he will be an inspiration. And Drouin back on the ice. Warwick and Anderson with him. Gulak shot blocked and skips back out to center ice. Well, it's a line that looked good right from the hop. And, uh, a lot of people are going to find out how good Christian Dvorak is in a hurry, don't you think? Absolutely. I think it was almost a necessity to fill that spot. You lose Deneau in a critical role, and you lose the Kotkaniemi with the offer sheet. And that is a pretty darn good replacement having Dvorak in that position. Dvorak with 17 goals in Arizona, but lauded by his former coach Rick Tockett for his defensive ability. Good on the faceoffs. Tavares sends it in. Jake Allen sent it to the line. Kept in there by Marner. 
Petrie had it go off his skate. Back for Marner. In the slot for Richie. It comes back to Travis Dermott. And Sandine deflected, and Allen able to hold on to that. It's game time. Order all your favorites with Skip the Dishes. Let's get hungry. Oh, it's been a fire wagon start. And a face off in the Montreal zone. John Tavares will win it back. Rasmus Sandin. Marner fanned on that. Nick Ritchie in the corner. Jake Evans for the Canadians battling along the boards, but Marner stays with it. And now David Savard trying to clear. And finally played out. Matthew Perot slaps his stick as he heads to the bench. Here's Sandine. They're now seeing the goal at 10-12 and calling it a power play goal for Toronto. We'll get that confirmed during the intermission. Alex Kerfoot centering this line in the absence of Austin Matthews. John Tavares moving up with Marner. A chance for Riley. And that one didn't get to the net. Ben Chirac up the boards and T.J. Brody swept at it. Finally played out to center. So Kerfoot centering. Bunting and Nylander here tonight. Now it's Kerfoot put all over this Leaf lineup in the preseason. And now here into game one. I think a real difference too is David Camp has been well thought of by Sheldon Keith and wants him in that sort of checking role. So with Matthews back, I think Kerfoot does have the opportunity to maybe slide to the wing again or go down even to the fourth line in that position. Matthews pass broken up. Drew Ann streaking after this. Cut off at the pass by Muzzin. Sent ahead and it skipped over the stick of Simmons. Spezza knocks down his man. Under six and a half left in a robust opening period for the 21-22 season. And here's Jeff Petrie. Knocked off his stick. Armia lost it to Kasha, but Engvall was trapped offside. Game-changing streaming on the go with Canada's largest and most reliable 5G network. Chris, you mentioned the fact that Montreal last year took over that underdog role and really ran with it come playoff time. But one thing Dom Ducharme talked about is just their ability to play well defensively in each zone. And you've seen a little bit of it here. They've sworn you in the neutral zone, don't allow the easy entries. And that's something they did to perfection come playoff time that got them to where they did so far, just a few games away from winning the Stanley Cup. Just under six minutes remaining in the opening period. Tied at one. And Cooper and Edmonton get set next. 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on Sportsnet and Sportsnet Now. And the Winnipeg Jets are also in action at Honda Center tonight against the Ducks. 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, Sportsnet 1 and Sportsnet 360. You heard Elliot Freeman say the Winnipeg Jets were going to be the best Canadian team. It just be a welcome change to have a different opponent other than the Canadian on Canadian. As you mentioned, they're off the top 21 games in 2021 between these two teams. I mean, almost incredibly unheard of. Be a welcome change to have some different opponents. An action is anxious to see Edmonton and Vancouver as well. Pierce. John Tavares back to the line. Brody shot. And that cheats direction and rang off the post. There's Richie with his hands in that high slot area. He had Marner behind him, too. There had been a rebound. Marner might have been able to grab it, but the deflection off the post and into the corner. David Savard onto the right side for Caulfield, bouncing it into the lead zone. There's Suzuki. Back to back, 41 point seasons for Nick Suzuki and you wonder how high the ceiling will be in this full campaign. Deep 
Landry drops it back in. Matthew Perot on the board check. There's Cedric Paquette, a Stanley Cup winner with the Tampa Bay Lightning two seasons ago. And looking to rebound. Playing on the line with Perot and Arturi Lekkinen. And Dean up with it. Playing it out to center, looking for Nylander. Kulak was there to cut off the pass. Shots now 9-7 for the Canadians. Who had six of the first four minutes. Muzzin plays it in. Simmons on the four check. Back to Muzzin. That hit the netting. Muzzin signaling that. It's, the netting just maybe fluttered because of the contact along the boards. It sure looked like it though, didn't it? Yeah. And you're right, Muzzin was all over it. Now Dvorak with that pass off the end boards, read by Campbell to disrupt that, and Amadio sends it down. Simmons gives chase against Romanov. Dvorak hit there by Spezza. And the Canadians play it back out. Morgan Riley on the move. Here's Riley, contract year for him. T.J. Brody steps up, a centering play, and it goes off the stick of Kasha. Riley for Kasha in the slot. He'll clear it right on, and that's kicked away by Allen. Brody for Ingball. Camp shot was blocked. Kasha's got it, shooting it. Camp with the doorstep. Not able to pull that down, and uh, hand pass will for play. Well, that would have been interesting as Muzzin was yelling that it hit the mesh, and the rule would have been as the puck came down, let's have a look if it did or not. He's the one that shot it, so he was a pretty good vision of it. But, Chris, the fact that the puck came all the way out of the zone and then went back in, had that goal gone in there, a couple of big saves by Allen, it wouldn't have been reviewable because the play had gone into the neutral zone and back. So, you know, if Montreal bench would have been probably talking had the Leafs been able to bury that one afterwards. John Tavares knocked it off the stick of Savard who's able to recover for the Canadians. There's Dermott, Marner, and that pass for Tavares doesn't work. Sandine activates. Marner backs him up. Sandine back at the line. In behind the net, there's the captain looking for Richie, and it ends up on the stick to Brendan Gallagher, and away goes Evans. Evans with Armia and Gallagher on this third line for Montreal. Gallagher lost his two line mates to No and Tatar to free agency. Do you think that'll be a work in progress for Dominic Ducharme? He likes the makeup of his top two lines right now, but. You know, at some point, if Gallagher's not going offensively, you, you got to find the spark for him. He's been such a solid player and a real leader for this group. Here's Alex Kerfoot, Michael Bunting on it. Bunting credited with an assist on the Ingball goal, so 58 in his first game as a Maple Leaf is on the board. Here's Caulfield trying to get on the board. Turning away from Hall, gets it to Toffoli, and it's played towards Campbell, and he'll cover up. Foley is dangerous as he can be. That's kind of his type of play. He just sifts into the area. He's got such great hands and able to find a little opening. He tried to buy himself a little more time. Nice play there by Caulfield, but in the middle of three sticks, he loses it to the outside, and a smart play by Kerfoot. Just get it to the goaltender, calm things down. What a great year by Toffoli, his first. And Chris, there's a guy who can't wait to get to Montreal for some fans in the stand. 28 goals, seventh of the league last year. Makes a call against Toronto. You look and say, okay, where's the offense going to come for the Montreal Canadiens? I don't mind the look of their forwards. I think the biggest question will be their defense uh, with the absence of Edmondson early on here. And of course, we've talked about Weber, his ability. And that's what's opened the door for a young man like Romanov and Whiteman getting an opportunity to get back in the N NHL from the KHL as well. The six defensemen right now on the roster for the Canadians in the absence of Edmondson. We should mention Mike Hoffman's going to bolster the offensive look of the Canadians when he gets healthy. 
many guys in the league can shoot like Mike Hoffman? King ball sends it deep. Jason Spezza looking for it there. Got David Camp tied up there by Dvorak. Weidman works it loose and it's locked it out to center by Drewen. Anderson didn't see it coming. Wayne Simmons back in. Looks across out of the reach of Spezza. Here in the final minutes of a good first period. Taken away here and centered by Amadio. Through the blue and Gallagher ahead and off the stick of Evans, icing Montreal. He said a good first period and you know this could have been a very different first period had it not been for Jack Campbell right off the bat. They, that first shift with a set play that he made two big saves on and you got to think about what's going on in his mind knowing this is his opportunity you got a 29 year old first time he's played the first game of the year and Campbell's had a pretty solid first period in this one. There's Nylander from the face off and he whipped it wide. What a good look for William Nylander who scored in five of the seven games in that first round series. Nylander up here with Marner in the final half minute of the period with John Tavares. Deflected in front. Tavares backhands it wide. Here's Dermott playing it back and across it comes to Sandine. Also an assist on the lead goal. Late pressure here in the final dozen seconds. It'll be Sandine again off the post and up onto the netting. A late push here by the Leafs in the first period. I like this for Sheldon Keith. You often see it. You get Nylander a little extra ice time, so he's up with Tavares and Marner. And he does an excellent job of just putting the puck to an area, and you saw Jake Allen never really even saw that one, and Sandine's shot hits the leg of Evans and goes up a little bit. Another one that, Evan, that Allen not really able to find through the traffic in front, but it's off the bar and out instead of in. 8.5 remaining. A face off one by Dvorak, who is so adept in that area. Bouncing at the line. And the Canadians clear at the horn. Terrific start to a new season. Jonathan Druett on the board early. And Pierre Engvall now with the power play goal to tie it. After the opening 20 minutes, the shots on goal nine apiece. Our first intermission is coming up. Montreal Canadiens, and his line has looked good. Pierre Engvall, he adds a power play goal, so we are tied at one after the first period of play at Scotiabank Arena. Carolyn Cameron, Elliot Friedman, Cassie Campbell Pascal, and Kevin Bieksa back with you as I'm looking at the wrong camera, getting used to this new studio. You didn't do that pregame, right, Elliot? Only about four times. <laughs> well, I don't care who you cheer for. You have to be happy for Jonathan Drouin in scoring that opening goal because, as many of you probably know, he took time off last season after the first 44 games to deal with his anxiety and insomnia linked with anxiety. When he did the interviews before training camp revealing exactly what he'd gone through he was shocked pleasantly surprised by the amount of messages that he received giving him support for going public and saying you helped us out and we're going to do it too and you know I, I can only imagine when he gets to the end of the game tonight and he turns on his phone what is going to be there because that was an enormous moment and I know Cassie you watching it you were particularly struck yeah, it was emotional back where we watched the games with the multiple TVs. And you just think of being in that market, a young man with the expectation that he has being a French Canadian. And at the time, you know, you're, everyone's thinking, oh, yeah, he's just a dog. He doesn't want to play. You know, he, he's feeling the pressure. He just can't handle it. All the negative things that he must have heard. And to know that he has the courage now to tell his story, just so powerful. And to see what Carey Price is going through, too. Yeah. We'll probably hear more about that when he's ready to tell his side of his story. But it's remarkable what these players have gone through all of us you know especially frontline workers through covid but hockey players are humans too and i just have to say that jonathan duran getting that goal and the assist to josh anderson his teammate who came out in the preseason and supported him and and had so many great things to say about him what a story and it was a beautiful moment, Cassie, that we almost missed because we were looking at Elliot's rear end for half the intermission. <laughs> well, he tinkered TVs. with the remotes. There's <laughs> 75 TVs, and this guy in the middle of the period decides he was going to change one monitor of the 75. And, of course, 
we know what happened, right? But beautiful moment. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Rick Rippon when he took his first leave of absence from our team. And then he came back and he played his first game in, I think, like a year. And just how much he needed the game and how much, you know, he needed to be around the guys. It's a great moment. As Jonathan said preseason, he said, I'm proud of what I've done and I'm happy I did it. And I think I can speak for everyone that we're happy that Jonathan had the courage to speak up too, because it helps many of us who are watching. Uh, another game on the go right now is the Washington Capitals taking on the New York Rangers. And it's Kuznetsov over to Ovechkin, over to TJ Oshie to put the Capitals up one nothing. And then there was another goal but it was ruled offside, so we're not gonna show you that. We see that enough. What we were waiting to see, though, was the Rangers' answer to their Tom Wilson problem with Ryan Reeves. Well, story of this game is Ryan Reeves being brought in to neutralize Tom Wilson, and I have a little bit of experience because I was brought in to neutralize Elliot. So I know how it feels, but the thing about that makes this so unique is Tom Wilson is a unique player in the sense that he's as tough as a heavyweight, uh, as any heavyweight in the game these days, but he has first-line skill. So he doesn't have to fight. So he's very effective because nobody in anyone's top six, maybe except for Nick Ritchie, can really stand up to him. So Ryan Reeves is a guy who's been able to get under Tom Wilson's skin before. I'm saying this, and I don't know if it's true, but a little part of me thinks that Tom Wilson's scared of Ryan Reeves. And I think this was a smart play by the Rangers to bring him in. Reeves doesn't even really have to do anything if Wilson stays in check. But if he gets out of line, we all know that Reeves is going to antagonize him and go right after him. Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right, <laughs> stuck in the middle with you too. But you go back to the incident last year, of course, Tom Wilson, we've seen this time and time again. And you think that next game, who did the coaching staffs of both teams start? Well, they're depth guys and some tougher guys on the back end, if you will. And this is what ended up happening. And I think both coaches, to a degree, sent a message. Gallant first, obviously, he had to put his lineup in first tonight. We're going to play our top line, our top guys, our top six guys. Washington responds, they're going to play their top six guys. It's not that this event is over because you know it's going to come back at some point during the season, but you recognize that both coaches feel it's important just to get through this game, make sure we win that first one of the season, and maybe the shenanigans happen down the road. Kevin took up all your time. I've been <laughs> neutralized. <laughs> See? It all worked out. A huge game right now on Sportsnet 1 between Canada and Panama, and would you look at this, Canada tying it up in World Cup qualifying. What a huge game for John Herdman in Canada, and you can watch that live right now on Sportsnet 1. As we get you set for the second period from Toronto, a power play goal for Toronto and Pierre Engvall to tie things up at 1. Oh my God! <laughs> what are you even doing? <laughs> I mean, my fantasy football team, I got a couple of them. Get out of here. How many of these do you have in your house, and where are they? Got a ton of them. Lenny backs his, oh, backs yeah. his thing oh, up yeah. onto oh, yeah. you, and then... Like tunnel music? Yeah, like, like for, for, just for, like for this stretch. Bang, here, hold my water, hold my bottle steel. Or whatever, <laughs> I mean, it might be stronger than that. This kind of feels weird talking about this with you, obviously. But uh, <laughs> after a big win, I can hardly sleep. After a big loss where, you know, you got blown out, I fall asleep almost instantly. Sometimes you gotta shut the f up. That, I mean, that's, that's impossible. Do you have some lifts in there? No, no. You got a good arm, huh? This is where Rory brings it up. Is, is it Applewood? Is it? <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's begin on three, two, one. Good to have Cabby back with Sportsnet. We're gonna see he and Connor McDavid on Hockey Night in Canada, and you'll see that piece pregame on Hockey Central beginning at 6.30 Eastern time. And then what a lineup, as it still seems weird to see Canadian teams playing American teams. But that's where we are in a regular, regular season. The Oilers open their season tonight against the Canucks and the Jets against the Ducks on Sportsnet. Friedman preview all 32 teams and make a few predictions. Stream the episode now on sportsnet.ca or on your preferred podcast platform. Spencer Carberry, the Leafs' new assistant in charge of the power play. He was one of the best coaches Matt Molson has ever had. Molson was Carberry's captain in Hershey. He said Carberry usually got to the rink at 4.45 a.m. to prepare for each day. That he does a good job of trying to understand what a player's mindset is in different situations on the ice. That he earned the player's respect quickly with how hard he works trying to make the team better. Molson texted him the other day, giving him praise for putting Mitch Marner in the middle on the power play, but it's Pierre Engvall that had the extra man advantage goal in the first, Chris. Yes, and the Leafs power play got some help. The timekeeper <laughs> dialed it back one second, Duke. 
Make the goal at 10 12 and make it a power play. And that little slight might be enough to be a confidence boost, don't you think? Absolutely. And I really think it will be about the adjustments as the year goes along, as we saw from their numbers last year. The great start just went away, and for some reason, they couldn't quite get it back together when they needed to. Suzuki shoots it in, Caulfield after it. John Tavares back in his own zone. Tavares played just 253 of that series last year. We all remember the reason he did not come back. Good to see that he had a normal summer of work and has come back even more focused than ever, according to his coach, Sheldon Keith. Gulak after it, able to play it past Kasha. He had Anderson loose, but Kasha came up with it and back the other way, Justin Hall. Kasha on that right side will shoot it wide of the net. Big Muzzin moves up. Short side shot shrugged away by Allen. Justin Hall takes the shot. And that one changed direction off the goal post or the side of the net from Eggball, who almost doubled down. You can see by Allen's response, he wasn't able to control that one and just tried in desperation to get across a little bit too tough an angle there for Engball to find the back of the net again. There's Engball getting a little more of an opportunity with an injury to Ilya Mikheyev, and at least very early on, making the most of it. Yeah, and, and another frustrating start for him with an injury early on. So he did only get into those last couple of games, but there's the bouncer that Allen throws right back to him, tried to get the blocker down, and Engvall unable to get the tough angle shot. He just watched it on the replay, shaking his head on the leaf bench. Shots were even in the first period at nine apiece. The face-offs were also deadlocked, 11 for each team. And that one pops into the glove of Campbell. They'll do it over again. Christian Dvorak was six and two in the face-off circle for the Canadians in the opening 20 minutes. And Alec, Alex Kerfoot looking for his first face-off win. That's the one issue about Kerfoot playing center with about a 40% face-off proficiency last year. Over the line and that pass hit a leg and bounces back. And on the other side too with Deneau leaving, that's why Dvorak's so important because Suzuki was only 44% last year as well. That's an area where as good as he has been offensively, he's going to have to improve so that you can keep putting you in those key moments. In the postseason, Deneau 54.2%. Rest of the Canadians at 46.4. He sends it in front, and Nylander's redirect. Stopped by Allen. Close call there. Up ahead it goes for Caulfield. His four postseason goals all scored against the Vegas Golden Knights. P.J. Brody works the boards. Caulfield and Suzuki surround him. Riley ahead, Jason Spets away. Spets yesterday was asked about the excitement of opening night, and he said it's like being a nine-year-old on Christmas Eve. Now one of the players trying to follow up what was a pretty good postseason for William Nylander is just right inside. He got inside position as Caulfield was a little late. Romanov didn't pick him up and then right through the five hole. It's the back part of the leg of Allen as he moved that right leg back. He knew he got beat in the five hole, but he got a piece of it with the back end of his leg to kick it out the other side. So Nylander going over that last play at the Toronto pitch. Richie Estille tried to center it and that was disrupted by Kulak and flipped away by Petrie. Icing against Montreal. Jackpotcity.net. Casino games perfectly made for you. Maple Leafs with the first period goal tonight. They led the league in first period goals last year, but only had one against the Canadians in the opening round. One apiece here, early in the second. Across it comes to Hall. 
Looks it toward the net and a deflection, and Allen has to be sharp on that redirect. Chris, we were mentioning the move by Mark Bergevin to bring in Dvorak, and here's just how important it was. Look at the amount of faceoffs compared to Deneau. Dvorak took the most in Arizona of anybody. The percentage fairly close, a little more ice time, and I think the bottom, though, is the upside, the offense. 17 goals last year, 18 is his career high, and that's something that Deneau wasn't able to consistently put is the puck in the back of the net. Rick Dockett said that uh, utilized him so much in a defensive role it might have hurt his offense and there might be more there hey, hey. on the board check drew in with a hit ball stayed on the puck and the leafs will roll it out there's another example of drew and just using his speed he got in there a little quicker than i think the leaf defenseman was expecting could did a good job of getting the body and turning the puck over twice a 53 point score once with Tampa Bay, once with Montreal. Allen swings it away from Engvall. Petri sends it back towards the side, gives it up. Kasha, Engvall. Back to the line, Brody. Morgan Riley. Engvall trying to get some space in front. Riley couldn't get him the puck, and Allen will pounce on it. We'll check back in with Kyle. Chris, you guys were talking about Christian Dvorak. Don Ducharme had the comment during training camp. He is even smarter than I thought. He talked about him a little bit more this morning, saying his ability to see the ice, to make plays, his vision, it's at a level that even I wasn't aware of before Dvorak got to Montreal. There's a guy on the leap bench that might be able to confirm all of that scouting report because Mitch Marner was his line mate with the London Knights. They tore it up on their way to a Memorial Cup. Pass for Sandine. Gets it in the slot, knocked away by Gallagher, kept in by Nylander. Ben Sherratt. Now with Chris Weidman, a long shot down the ice, an icing call against Montreal. So it was Dvorak, Marner, and Ed Matthew Kachuk to the mix. And it's a pretty good junior line, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You know the kind of points that Mitch Marner put up, but look at Christian Dvorak in the middle. Is, you know, at times it doesn't necessarily happen as quickly in the National Hockey League, but once you get into that 25 to 27 year range, you get more comfortable, and I, I think that's where the upside for Dvorak really could come into play with the role he's going to have here in Montreal. Punching him behind the net for Kerfoot. Dermott will swing it back deep. Punting Parks in front. Nylander bounced off a check. Trying to shake the checking of Lyman in front. Begging away, punting. And Allen holds the board. And there's Michael punting. And what the Leafs were looking for from him. And Jake Allen strong in goal to keep it out. And one thing that Sheldon Keith's talked a lot about bunting, not afraid to go into those tight areas, get yourself to the front of the net. And this is one of survival for Allen. He's got not only bunting in front, but he's got Evans as well. Now a good clear there by Sherrod, who just goes after Dermott, knocks him away. But for Allen, he's trying to anchor those feet back and not go over the line. Look at how he's trying to move himself to keep it. Boy, visually, you can't see that one go over at all, but it had to be close. There's the hard hit by Sherrod. Forget about the puck. Dermott tries to get it. Sherrod knocks him down, and Allen somehow able to hold on and not allow that one to go over the line. And the kid from Scarborough. An assist in the first period for Bunting. First ever Toronto Maple Leaf to win number 58. Having a look look gonna have another look just to make sure. Taking a little time. The overhead there that you saw, you kind of lost sight of the puck, but often there's the in-net cameras. Nylander just slides it across, and there's the puck hits Evans. You get Dermott with one chance. Do you see it pop through? You lose sight of it there. Oh, it's still in the blue at that point. Nothing from that angle there seemed to 
see it go over. But you never know from in camera, in the nets, you might have seen something different that we can't, but no, now they're going back for the face off and it's no goal. So Bunting on the doorstep, Jake Allen though. Does some good work to make sure that doesn't get behind him. Wayne Simmons on it. Knocked down by Savard. Gets up and kicks the puck through the blue. It'll be Brody centering it. And Amadio swung at that. Another cut played to the net and ricocheted off a skate to out. Amadio lost it. Here's Suzuki. Amadio stayed with it. And Morgan Riley takes it away. Up onto the right side. Simmons and Brody over the line. Wayne Simmons. Looking across and a bouncing puck hit with a high stick by Savard. Well, there's a fourth line going up against the Suzuki line, and early on it was Toronto getting the pressure. And you know, that's for Sheldon Keith. When you get Austin Matthews back, what's that fourth line gonna look like? Is it somebody like Amadio who jumps out, or is Simmons gonna continually be in? I, I think the competition's gonna be very healthy, Chris, and the additions that Kyle Dubas brought in. You've got a couple of 25-year-olds. You got a couple of 26-year-olds. Guys who are really pushing to play a significant role, and I think it'll make for some great competition here early on in the season. Dvorak wins that drop back in the corner. Richie and Tavares look to get it back. Here's Marner cycling it back. Richie tied up. Down went Kulak. Tavares is on it, and Tavares is. Gonna get called. First power play from Montreal upcoming as the captain heads off. So look at it with the takedown of Dvorak. This season and we'll have to see what kind of adjustments they make without Shea Weber. Well, you know, power play special teams are all about the adjustments you have to make with personnel. And obviously with Weber out, you, you know the impact he's had. Here's the last five seasons tied for second amongst all D-man with 26 power play goals. But here's a unique play. You've got five right-handed players out here for the Montreal Canadiens. You've got Cole Caulfield, who as a righty will be on the left side for a one-timer as well. So it'll be a very interesting start to this season to see how they can come together and make something happen on this new look power play. Leafs win a draw and get it clear. Canadians looking for their first shot on goal of the second period. Past the six minute mark. Petrie the quarterback and that errant pass intercepted and Muzzin will turn them back. Been some talk about William Nylander killing penalties this year and he comes out with the second Penalty kill pair for Dean Chenault as it's sent down into the Toronto zone. Nylander with 41 seconds of shorthanded ice time last year. And the Leafs get another clear and Nylander heads to the bench. Well, there's one way of stymieing a power play. Just don't allow the entry. It's a really good job defensively of pressuring the dump in not effective. And that can be the most frustrating for that first power play not to be able to get in and get your setup. Caulfield with a couple of power play goals last year. Engvall intercepts. Engvall trying to barge through. And Petri makes the defensive play. But it's been advantage penalty kill so far. Canadians with 45 seconds left to change that. Petrie back and Jonathan Drew and the goal scorer. Here comes Anderson. And he lost it as he charged to the net. Hopped on Dvorak. Now Anderson takes over. Back to Drew and Dvorak parked in front and got a stick on that as it deflected high. Back to the line, Weidman. Weidman on this second power play unit. The reason he nailed down that sixth defensive spot to the Canadians roster. Comes across Armia. Armia off Riley. Good stick there by Campbell. And the puck played just over the reach of Tavares as he came out of the box. Boy, Riley didn't realize. He, he heard the slap from the stick of Allen, but he didn't realize that he had Tavares all by himself. And 
Lucas threw that one down. Tavares a couple of seconds too late to get to it. Jake Evans plays it to the lead line. Brody for Hall and back. Eight and a half minutes gone, second period. Here's Tavares trying to center it. Unable to get it in front. And Matthew Perot plays it out. Here's Perot after it, former Winnipeg Jet. Drummondville native. Mentioned in the preseason, he was excited about a playoff series against the team he grew up cheering for. So you can imagine how excited he is to be in the Canadiens lineup. Well, Chris, one guy we've said a lot about tonight is Engvall. He's got the power play goal, and here on the penalty kill, said you just have to be aggressive, and that's one thing that Sheldon Keith wants from his penalty killers. Does a good job of coming off the boards from Gallagher, getting a good active stick, and then keeping it down low. And how about the read by Campbell? Gets the pass across, and you can see how close it was. Tavares about a half a step away from getting a hold of that one. John Tavares wins the face off in the late zone. Richie deflecting it. Just out of the reach of Marder. The Leafs now start the change. Wide but ahead. Picked off by Hall. Nylander back out there along with Bunting and Kerfoot. Caulfield. Now the Canadians start out. He sent in by Weidman. Tafoli after it against Dermott. And Tafoli lost the handle and Nylander starts back. Here's Kerfoot, good poke check there by Kulak. Following up though is Sandine. Can't get by Romanov. Great pass across. Nylander the slot. And that's stopped by Campbell. Or excuse me, Allen. As William Nylander's head, some chances. And flipped away by Montreal. Jake Allen out of the net for Fredericton. New Brunswick native up ahead for Lekkonen, who lost it inside the line. And now Amadio battles for it. Arturi Lekkonen comes back to retrieve it. Paquette, red line and in. Campbell knocks that down and plays it for Brody. Knocked down by Lekkonen. Rasmus Sandin for T.J. Brody. There's Dvorak trying to take it away. Michael Amadio. Now Tavares checked there by Drouin. Not as wide open as that first 10 minutes. Drop down into the Montreal zone. There's Drouin at center. Dvorak to the attack. Got Anderson loose and popped into the air and flicked into the glove of Campbell. Oh, Michael Bunting has his first assist as a Maple Leaf already. He makes a heck of a pass through the seam. Dermott, instead of the shot, tries to get the knee lander. He can't pull the trigger, and that one slides by wide. That's your first career opening night start for Jack Campbell, who was drafted in the first round 2011. First win didn't come till 2018. And he kind of eased his way into last season before really making his mark. Yeah, well, injury early. Only three of the first 31 games did he start in. And what you have to look at the sample size, though, when basically he's 19 of 25, that was their starter numbers. And you could see what his goals against and record was. Add to that a 3-4 and four record in the playoffs. But, Chris, a 1.81 average. So at least he's making the mark of saying, I, I think I'm ready at this stage to be a starter. The question will be, what's the number round number that he'll end up starting and Mirazic will get as well. Off the top of the show, Kyle talked about the athletic heroes that motivated some of the players during the summer. For Jack Campbell, the motivation was the disappointment of game number seven and the enduring images of that documentary on the Maple Leafs, all or nothing was how hard Campbell took it in the aftermath of Game 7. All for Engvall, and the lead goal scorer moves back in. Here Engvall plays that wide of the net, and there's Riley moving up, trying to center it with Tavares on the doorstep. Here's Tavares taking it away again. Marner now helping out. 
looking for Richie in front. And that's knocked off the stick of Richie by Jake Evans, who bounces it down. Quickly a lead feed from Brody to Tavares. To Marner. It's Marner. Allen stops that with Richie looking for a rebound. Great stick in hands there by Marner to knock that one past Kulak and able to keep his legs moving to create the chance. Giveaway here and maybe a chance for the Canadians as Suzuki just failed to get loose. Richie, the orange built product working along the boards. And now Riley will flip it to safety back into Canadians ice. There's to see a lot of the little stick battles there. There's another good stick in front of the net that cleared it away, but there's not a lot of open ice for guys to make the easy pass through. Rasmus Sandin, one of the stories of the league training camp. Now Dermott over the line. Dean Lander fired that off the glove of Jake Allen. And Matthew Perot will take over. Perot gives it up to Nylander. Back to Dermott at the line. Finds Sandin, fanned on that, but gets it back. Here's Sandin. That was fronted by Savard, who clears. Sandin had it knocked off his stick by Caulfield, and the play calls offside at the Toronto line. Oh, look at Mitch Marner watching it right as soon as he got back on. A nice heads up play by Brody, a bank pass. That stand up at the line was Kulak, but a nice job of Marner takes it to his backhand, and there's another one that Anderson, or Allen, pardon me, just slides across. Watch the quick hand, bats it right through, gets his feet moving, got his head up, and a nice opportunity in front that Allen able to close the five hole at the last second. When you can't beat a goalie, what do you do? Go to the bench and talk to the other goalie and see what you should have done. There's Mrazic getting involved in that video presentation. Pro sweeps it back into the leap zone. Campbell gave it up. But had to get some help there from Amadio knocking it away from the empty net. Good work by Pocket along the boards, and now the Leafs get control. And here's Justin Hall. On to the right side, Simmons. Wife in there for the Canadians, knocked down by Simmons. And a high stick. Anybody gonna play it? And we'll get a face off in the Montreal zone. What a little anxious moment for the Leaf Netminder here. Got some help from Michael Matteo. Summer athletes, there's Penny Alexiak, who <laughs> certainly did plenty of that with quite a metal haul. Well, tied in knots there. <laughs> That's a heavy load of medals, isn't it? What an incredible athlete she is. There's Dominic Ducharme just in front. It's interested by the comments of Ducharme since we're in the exact same place we were in last year late in the season. People not believing in us. And I think he's determined to get their attention like they did last season. You know, I even mentioned the offense for this Montreal Canadian team. The four lines that are represented by the Canadians versus Toronto here actually have 13 more goals than the Maple Leafs line. 127 goals in last year's lineup for Montreal and 114 with the absence of Austin Matthews. Here's Marner off that faceoff win and that shot. Off the stick of Muzzin, deflects out of play. Oh, what a good play coming down the left side by Muzzin, reading that from behind the net. Tried to sneak in, but the last second, a good active stick defensively by Anderson. Anderson kind of got lost on his coverage for a second, but watch the quick head movement. Now, all of a sudden, he saw that Muzzin had come down, and at the last second, got the stick in there before Muzzin to get it on net. John Tavares, eight and five of the face-off circle, best of the Leafs, and one another, but it's knocked off the stick of Nylander and out. Christian Dvorak, 10 and four for the Canadians tonight. Here's Anderson, shooting it wide. Kulak steps up. Dvorak from the corner. An outlet to Hall. Back at the line, Petrie, that shot blocked by Hall in front. And the Leafs send it out at center and Marner unable to come up with that pass misses Drew Ann and 
slides in, and now the Canadians will make a wholesale change. All around, and David Camp's got to scramble back with Gallagher causing a commotion. Armia behind the net. Gallagher looks for it. And Jim Evans steps up. Leads for him, David Camp, and Kasha trying to get it out. Here's Weidman shooting right on, and Camp be able to clear the rebound away. Ingball trying to catch up to that with Kasha. Here's Ingball to Kasha. Up his step wide. Close call on a two-on-one counter punch by the Leafs. Now it's hit the front. Kasha dropped by Allen. Big stop. Jake Allen as Andre Kasha looks for his first Leaf goal. 20 goal scorer with Anaheim. A centering pass there. And Evans able to intercept and clear as the Leafs come up with a couple chances. Of examples of David Camp and why Sheldon Keith likes his ability to play at both ends of the ice. Bunting for Kerfoot off his stick. Weidman in the corner for the Canadians. Nylander pried it loose. Sandine shooting. Allen gets a piece of that. And now we've got Bunting shaken up in front of the net and slow to get to his feet, looking for a penalty call, but none forthcoming. And there's the puck pass. Bunting as he heads to the Toronto bench. Gathering speed, Suzuki. Nick Suzuki, and a nice toe stop there by Campbell. The Foley to the line for Hamilton native Ben Sherratt. Off target, Richie lost it. Coalfield, Caulfield's on it. And now Tavares for Marner. Sherratt stepped up on him. Navarro's along the boards, and now Marner's got it. Sandine off the stick of Tavares. And Sherratt back in his own zone. Three minutes left here in the second period. It remains deadlocked at one. There's Amadio. Michael Amadio without a goal last year with the Los Angeles Kings. And Ottawa Senators. Master Spencer broken up by Anderson. Simmons hits the deck. Anderson charging in. Here's Josh Anderson, and he couldn't get it to the net. Now Simmons checked by Drouin. Amadio tripped up there, and Dvorak takes over. Drouin back in. Swings it into Lekkonen's corner. Watch there by Brody. At the line, Petrie shot and that glanced off Campbell and just missed the far corner. Lekin and centering it, knocked away. Now Perot trying to keep it alive for this fourth line from Montreal. Back hit, charging in. Lekin along the boards. And finally batted out. And Kulak will drift it back into the leap zone. 100 seconds left here in the second. He has some tired bodies out there for the Leafs over a minute plus. For all but one who camp who was able to just make the change, but now he's given an icing, so an opportunity for the Montreal Canadiens. I talked about David Camp and his ability at both ends. Here's a good read coming back to the front of the net. Gallagher's in position, the rebound's there, and that little outlet goes back the other end. Kasha does a nice job of getting it outside to Engball, trying to buy some time, but Kasha unable to connect on that one. Anderson showing his speed, protecting the puck well, but a good job of Morgan Riley at the last second coming in and getting a stick on that. Riley and Brody have been out for over a minute and a half here. Amadio off the boards and out. The Leafs try to get a change, but not yet. At least not the Blue Liners, Brody and Riley. Camp off the boards. Pierre Engvall onto the left side. Riley going to advance into the offensive zone, and now he'll peel back and get to the bench. Final minute, second period. Justin Hall to Engvall. Sherratt stands up at the line. And now Suzuki will dance in. Puts on the brakes, looks for help. Line mates just getting out there now to Foley and Caulfield. 
Those three combining for 42 playoff points as a line. That's another acing call against Toronto. That one just barely made it over, and the officials trying quickly to get the right guys back on. You're looking at Camp spin out there a minute 13. The other guy's not so much a problem. It's Muzzin who's a little bit slunched over there. David Camp, though, that's one thing he was brought here as well. Good in the faceoff dot, almost 53% last year. Against the Vorak, and it comes back to Sherrod at the line. Up to the side of the net, and Paul wards off Dvorak. The Leafs are going to get called for icing again with 13.4 to go. Well, we've seen the importance of the late goals and what they can do. Momentum. This has been a pretty even match since that frenetic start to be in this game. And so one more face-off attempt here as Dvorak tries to win on his strong side. Canadians come up with it. Anderson gets a shot on goal through him from the corner. Back to the line. Petrie, one last shot deflected by Anderson, who looks skyward after that redirect. So we're through two here in Toronto tonight. Opening night of a new season. And we're tied at one. The Leafs have outshot the Canadians 22-20 through 40 minutes. fans getting along at Scotiabank Arena, I'd say so. It's easy to be like that when they're tied at one after two periods of play. It's great seeing fans back at Scotiabank Arena and arenas across, especially Canada, but also North America. As we welcome you to the second intermission, Carolyn Elliott, Cassie, and Kevin back with you. And Cassie, let's start between the pipes on both sides, because this is kind of new for Jake Allen, taking the spot of Carey Price as the number one goalie right now. And same with Jack Campbell now, without Freddie Anderson around. And the theme here is a little bit about battle level. And we saw that from the two goaltenders without question throughout this game so far. And we'll go back to the first period and we'll talk about Jack Campbell. And, you know, sometimes in the preseason, those games are important for goaltenders because you're dealing with this type of traffic. But watch the battle level here. The rebound gets away from him. He's got Christian Dvorak all over him. Get, takes actually a little bump right there, but stays with it, finds the puck. And again, it's just about that secondary third level battle. And then here's Jake Allen on the other side of things. You know, a lot of traffic from the Leafs in front. He's just battling. And watch the right leg. He's looking for an anchor here, and he doesn't get it. He's looking for that post to anchor the right leg. Doesn't get it. Tries to push off the back of the net, but he keeps this puck out. And that's what you're trying to do. If you're Jake Allen and Jack Campbell filling that number one role for, for who knows how long on both cases, and they're battling level hard, is, is a high level here tonight. Kevin, for Leafs fans, they want to see something different than they saw last season if the Leafs want to make a longer run in the playoffs, and you're seeing something tonight. Well, it's only two periods, so it's a small sample size, but style of play for the Leafs. Last year, let's look at what they valued. Puck possession, Kyle Dubas, analytics. They wanted to possess the puck as much as possible. What does that mean? It means they're always on the outside because they're trying to possess the puck. Fast forward how that worked in the playoffs. Not too good, Elliot, did it? Right? First round loss to Montreal. And it's not very hard to defend. Sorry, it's not very. Uh, what am I trying to say? It's hard to defend a team that is trying to get inside. And you see tonight a conscious effort in front of the net to always have a guy there, which means that you can shoot the puck from basically anywhere and it's a dangerous shot. But how many times do we see this? A guy in front of the net for the Leafs, hacking, whacking, falling on the goalie. That's bunting right there. He's not a very big guy. Nick Ritchie has been there all night long. The first goal was because Ritchie's in front. You'll see him there because... Why, Cass? He doesn't like to ride the bike. He doesn't like to. <laughs> he finds it a little painful, but he likes to go in front it's of the net. It's painful, but being in front of the net is easy <laughs> because he's a big guy and he screens the goalie and he creates a lot of uh, adversity in front of the net. So that's the way it looks like the Leafs want to play this year. This is going to be one of the biggest adjustments for Montreal because last year there was a guy wearing number six, and if you were there, you felt pain. Shea Weber inflicted more damage on opposing players in front of the net than any player in the National Hockey League. He's not there this year, and the Canadians are going to have to adjust, and their goalies are going to have to adjust without it because there's a lot of forwards in the NHL saying, I'm pretty happy I don't have to take the punishment without Weber there. Yeah, and you can't put all of that onto a new addition like David Savard. But Josh Anderson, he was a welcome addition for the Montreal Canadiens last season, and he has an assist in that opening Jonathan Durangle. Here he is with Kyle Bacoskis. 
Josh, I know you're close with Jonathan Duran. You spent a large part of your summer living with him. What was your reaction and seeing him finish off your pass there in the first period? Uh, just excitement and, and relief. Um, you know, you know, Drew loves the game of hockey, and and we missed him, and we knew that he was going to be a big impact when he brought, when he came back here. So uh, I couldn't be more happy for him. Those three-day workouts he had you guys doing some days. How tough were those? Yeah, they were long days. They were very hard. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I was usually wanting to go, you know, back on the couch right at four o'clock, but uh, he got us back up and, and started lifting again. So uh, it turned out to be good. Lastly, Christian Dvorak making his debut with you guys here tonight. Uh, how has he fit in so far? Very smoothly. Uh, he's come in and made an impact right from the exhibition games right in tonight. And, and you can see how much, um, you know, we use him out there and how dynamic he is. And he's a solid centerman. Josh, appreciate this. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Josh, Kyle, thank you. And thank you, Alfonso Davies. Who else? The Davies to put Canada up 2-1, one, one, excuse me against Panama right now in World Cup qualifying on Sportsnet 1. Wow, one of the biggest goals for Canada in recent men's soccer history. Cameron Hughes is for openers across the country coming up at 10 p.m. Eastern time. No, it's I never the Canucks to... opening it's against the Maple Oilers League. on Sportsnet and on Sportsnet really, eh? 360. It's the Jets visiting the Ducks at the same time. A busy Scotiabank Wednesday night hockey. The Rangers taking on the Caps. Already 1-0 Washington. Pretty passing on the power play. That's Justin Schultz, his first of the year. And just 20 seconds after that, nice pass from Oshie to Gatineau, Quebec's Hendricks Lapierre with his first career NHL goal. It's 3-0 Caps. Oshie and Ovechkin both with two points already through two periods of play that game still in the second period to the third next celebrates hockey fans we live for this it's been said 582 days since scotiabank arena has been full of fans it's just nice to feel a sense of anticipation walking into the building earlier today fans on both sides hoping for at least a goal here in this third period, which leads us to NHL Edge IQ, powered by AWS, the official cloud infrastructure provider of the NHL. Jake Allen of the Canadians, perfect in the second period. Nine of the 22 saves he's had so far come from in tight. Jeff Petrie said this week, I don't think we were in the position to do what we did last year without him filling in for Carey Price when he was hurt. A different ask here this time around, trying to hold down the fort for at least the first month of the regular season here, Chris. Yes, indeed, and you look up. Uh Longer term, Jake Allen's been a starter in this league. He's had 60 and 56 starts in his season. Four times over 40 starts. We just don't know how many starts he'll have to make this year. And certainly hoping to see Kerry Price back as soon as that is possible. So these two teams went to overtime in the opener last year. And they start the third period tied at one and an icing call against Montreal. Yeah, this is one of those early games and an early test for both coaches. Can you play a defensive minded game and get some offense without cheating and, and you know throughout training camp both these coaches have been talking and harping on the importance of the structure of your game. Well the structure wasn't quite there in the first what 10 minutes but it's been there since then. This is in a pretty evenly matched game. From the draw scramble and Marner finds it. Riley Tavares whips the shot wide. There's Brody moving up. Duran leans on him. Tavares a backhand shovel toward the net. Morgan Riley steps up. Riley leads the Leafs in ice time. 15 and a half minutes through two periods. Jeff Petrie tops the board tonight with 16 and a half minutes of work so far. Riley finds Nylander, cutting in, shooting scores! The Leafs' top scorer against the Canadians in the last playoff series gives Toronto its first lead of the night. And you know the first high five he gets on the bench is from Mitch Marner. And it's because he makes a change and just comes on and gets lost. Look at Marner goes off, Nylander jumps on, gets left to the outside, and this is just a perfect shot. A fake like he's going to shoot the puck far side, and instead the quick little flip of the wrist up and over the glove of Jake Allen. 
Not so much a slap shot, just a little hesitation and the flick of the wrist and the high five went to Mitch Marner who came off the ice. Nylander gets lost coming on it and it's a 2-1 game. Nylander with 15 points in 15 games last year, including the playoffs against Montreal. A 31 goal score two seasons ago has given the Maple Leafs the lead at 106 of the third. But here comes to Foley and it bounced over the stick of Sherratt. Suzuki sweeps it around. This line for Montreal, six shots on goal. And she can add one there as Campbell covers up. Well, you know, it's interesting to start here with Austin Matthews out. You move Tavares away from having Nylander on his side. But look at that little half slap and then the hesitation at the end. And already Allen is down on this. Right there, Allen goes down. And instead, that's a great adjustment. And that's a confident shooter. Well, you spend all your time in practice to try to read the goaltenders. And he gets a pat on the back from the head coach for reading it perfectly there. Sheldon Keefe talked about the growth in William Nylander's game in the second half of last year. Here's a break from Menoff. Had to get back in a hurry. Shivering for Kemp. Went by him down the ice, and Gallagher's going to sprint after it for the Canadians. Now David Kemp trying to get this. Schmeagles his way past Armia. And Paul's got it along the boards. Looking to get it across in front. And Jake Evans comes back defensively. Andre Kasha's on the ice with five shots on goal and nine shot attempts so far. Jake Allen's going to flank that down. Kyle talked about the inner slot shots there for Allen, and most of the ones he's been having to fight for are with, like Kevin Bieksa was saying, lots of traffic in front. And there was just a classic example of shooter against goaltender at that time it was Nylander who came on top. Jason Spencer directed a little traffic but the face off intercepted there the win by Perot. Campbell's going to send that away from the on charging Perot off Simmons out to center. And David Savard will send it back in Savard with four block shots. In his Montreal Canadiens debut, Simmons unable to reach that, and Savard's got it. And the St. Hyacinth Quebec native played it ahead to throw, but offside the call. Dawn Power Wash saves you time from scrubbing dishes. Simply spray, wipe, and rinse to clean as you go. David Savard has to log important minutes on the back line for Montreal this year in the absence of Shea Weber. Gulak looking to center it here. Petrie loads and fires. And that one blocked and cleared away by Ritchie. Up past Tavares. And Petrie off the glass. Not it. Kept in by Hall. Now Dvorak bumps it back and the Canadians will get organized. Black off the stick of, thought it was off the stick of Bunting, but play is called. It's an icing against Montreal. Yeah, another key face off here and a few issues with some icing that create an opportunity after giving up a goal. The question now for Dominic Ducharme, okay, he's really been harping be solid defensively. But watch here, down by one, if the defense really start to jump up. We've seen Kulak a couple of times, and Petrie as well, and that's one way to try to get something going offensively. The face-off win for the Leafs. Nylander swings it wide of the net. Sandine in behind for punting. Now moving up, Travis Dermott. Dermott to the far side. That activates Sandine. Leaf defenseman in deep, and now Nylander comes up with it. William Nylander trying to fight off the checking of Petrie. It'll be played back for Dermott. Not her foot along the boards, but Drouin is able to get to it for the Canadians and drop it down into the leaf zone to get a change. Here's Travis Dermott through center. Red line and in, and Jake Allen stops it behind the Montreal net. Kasha after it. Into the corner for Engvall. 
His shot went wide. I think Allen saw that, didn't react to it. And back to Riley. Morgan Riley sends it off target. And it's played out by Suzuki. DJ Brody plays it back inside the Montreal line. Quickly played out. In ball. A touch to Kasha right on from long range and an easy Allen stop. Old Caulfield, a pair of shots so far. And there's a third off the blocker of Campbell. Brody sends it high in the air. He's trying to get it to Simmons. And now Amadio and Simmons to the line offside. Well, tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific on Sportsnet and Sportsnet Now. It'll be the Dodgers and Giants game five. The winner faces Atlanta in the NLCS. And looking forward later tonight, Vancouver and Edmonton, Winnipeg and Anaheim on the docket. Gallagher tripped over Spezza, and that's going to be a penalty against Toronto. That's a quick move at the line by Gallagher. He felt the pressure of Spezza, and this is one for Jason Spezza that you're thinking you might be able to get puck, and instead... Toronto penalty, 19, two minutes tripping. Got one hand on the stick, and then just a quick action move there, and the blade right on the feet. is smart move by Gallagher, but no question got him on the left skate, and down he goes. So the second power play of the night for the Canadians, 17th last year on the power play. It was the first time in 13 years they were out of the bottom third. They have not been in the top 10 since the 06-07 season. And here's that back end with Weidman in that position now as Petrie had been on for a while. Bruin also manning a point to start as the Leafs get a, a quick clear and Weidman goes back to get things organized. Dvorak's up front along with Armia. There's Marder with the trip and it's going to be a five on three for a minute 44. Boy, this is one of those with Marner. I just think he got the tip of his stick on the knee and Weidman went down. You know, often you can get a little hack in there and nothing happens. He's trying to pressure, 16, read it, and then right, yeah, just right on the back of the knee, Weidman goes down easily. Fans reacting, but you can see immediately Marner not liking the call, but what a chance here, a five-on-three opportunity. And you know, last year, the Montreal Canadiens only scored once in the 56 games on a five-on-three. Bench with some words for for Dwyer, and as you can see, the A power play out now for the Canadians. Five on three from the draw. Hall plays it to the far corner. David Camp with Muzzin and Hall, and there is a clear from Hall. And there's a clear message again: the aggressiveness. Camp took a chance there, but he had the back of his opponent, went in and pressured, and a good solid. Out man in the corner, despite being down five to three. Well, the Durant pass brings the Canadian power play back out. Minute 15 left in the Spezza penalty. Now they're in as Suzuki sends it around. That one skipped over the stick of Durant, but Petrie's got it at the point along with Suzuki. Now they'll get it set. Durant, Petrie leaned into that block. And cleared by Muzzin. A great block there by Camp. Took the lane away. Again, very aggressive kill by this five on three. Here comes Suzuki. Now Drouin to Foley. Caulfield call for it. Gives it back to Petrie. And to Foley. To Foley had trouble with that. As the Leafs aggressive again, but now a loose puck for Caulfield, and he stumbled and had the shot blocked by Brody. Bruin, Petrie. Petrie lets it fly, and Campbell's got it with Suzuki screening in front. Chris Sheldon Keith said that the penalty killing was going to be a little different. A couple of adjustments, and one of it here was you have the opportunity to look at the numbers and not the crest. You can pressure. You got numbers against Toffoli, so Camp does a nice job of pressuring. Always 
important to take away the shooting lane. There's a block, and then in the last shot here, a little stumble by Caulfield trying to find a way through. Finally, Campbell with a good save off of a Petrie one-timer as well. On the draw, Camp able to pull it back. Armia and Anderson retrieve it along the boards. And there's Weidman. Brendan Gallagher down low in front. And the Black Band on it. Great setup. Another great setup. And a stick stop there. I think it was Hall. And the first penalty done. And under 10 seconds remaining in the second as Hall was able to get it through. The place can explode. Just one shot on goal for Montreal. As Dean Chanel's penalty kill comes up big. Players talking about having the fans back and what a difference it makes. Here's why. A couple of great individual efforts. Hall gets back down, blocks it. Fans get on their feet and let them know. Back to Scotiabank Wednesday night hockey. For the Maple Leafs kill a minute 44 of a five on three Montreal power play and hold on to this 2 1 lead. Those are the moments that can change a game and a real opportunity missed there by the Canadians to tie this game up and turn it around. But that was an excellent example of how you can still be aggressive on a penalty kill being down five on three and then Hall with the great block at the end to help his goaltender. John Tavares back on the ice with Nick Ritchie and Mitch Marner. Luckin and trying to pull away. Dermot will fire it right back into the Montreal zone. Approaching eight minutes of the third. William Nylander at 106 of the third period from Riley and Marner. The go ahead goal. Here's Tavares looking for Marner. Knocked off his stick by Luckin. Ritchie will work the boards. Dermot will cycle it back. Ben Sherrod is there. And now Perot feeds it ahead. Lucking and roll it down. And both teams will start changes. There's another example, though. The Leafs D staying aggressive there, closing down. Sandine did on the left side, and then on the other side, his partner, Dermot, forced down right to the hash marks to keep the pressure on. Michael Bunting checks in along with Nylander at third foot. And he got carried along the boards and play continues. Strong play by Dvorak. Riley Anderson gets a piece of him. Bruan with a hit along the boards, but the puck comes out. And Dvorak has to scamper back. Kerfoot had to wait for his linemates to get back on side in the pass. Rolling into the Montreal zone starts the team. Here's Joel Armia playing it to the net. Knocked away by Campbell. And around it comes to Engvall, who has the goal and has had a strong night. Weidman holds it in, but Engvall on the second try gets it out. That one hopped over the stick of Campbell. Gallagher shot doesn't get to the net. Engball and Camp starting out from their own zone. Engball at center. Solo mission here with his linemates changing. And Romanov up ahead. Simmons off the bench nearly picked that off. Travis Dermott. Plays it down into the Canadian zone. Spezza crunched along the boards. Stayed on the puck. Simmons behind the net. Now Amadio. Back to Dermott. He'll flip it in the air. It'll be lumped down. And Weidman will clear. Chris Weidman, the highest scoring defenseman in the KHL last year. There's Sandine knocked off stride. Savard knocked down Simmons. Call there is Sandin. Got a stick in there, got knocked down. Dermott knocked down a Canadian. Savard moves up, and now David Savard centering. Here's Tyler Tafoli. Pass off the boards of Rick to Campbell. And the team will cover up. 
go-ahead goal here in the third period from the kid, William Nylander, 2-1 Toronto. Four lineup. One thing is this score you try to do in the earliest time you can to start the season is get the zeros off the board. Nylander's been all around the net tonight. He's got five shots on goal, a couple of them in tight that he wasn't able to quite finish. When he finally got a little open ice and was able to make a move, he makes the perfect shot. A 20% shooting percentage. But Chris, 31 goals two years ago, followed up with 17 in the shortened season last year. A good playoff, and you wonder what the limit will be in this season for his goal scoring prowess. And he gets his first one on the board here in game number one. Tenth goal of the last 16 games against Montreal. And a different role on the power play this year that might unlock a few more goals. Anderson has spilled. The Nylanders not even going to get a chance to kill this penalty because he's the one headed off. Now you got a, the exact same thing as the Spezza play at the line. Very similar as a quick little cutback here. He missed the puck, got right on the skates as Anderson goes down. Well, a penalty kill that looked pretty efficient last time for the Maple Leafs has to go back at it here again. One guy to watch here for Montreal, Chris, is Brendan Gallagher. This has been one of those games that you know, on the third line kind of lost a little bit. He's only played 1140. I'd get right to the front of the net, try to create something out of nothing here on this power play. Three power play goals for Gallagher last year. He's out there along with Suzuki to Foley. That puck out of play. And they're going to face off in the league zone. You know, here's the challenge as a coach. You, you know the importance of what Gallagher is. And he's such a key cog with the leadership gone. But you know, now there's a short shift that he doesn't get the chance. Ten seconds. And now the other group gets back on here. It, it'll be a managing when you're playing on that third line and he doesn't get that top line minutes that he has been in the past. Dvorak wins another face off. Chris Weidman at the left point. Drewan at the right. And it's sent around to Drewan. Watched by Marner. Anderson helping keep it alive for the Canadians. Christian Dvorak against his old line mate Marner. There's a shot right on and Jack Campbell has got that. Well, Campbell was moving laterally. Wasn't sure whether there was going to be a pass coming back, but he knew he had a right-handed shot in Armia. And penalty killing, you ask Sheldon Keefe of the success of their penalty killing. Well, when Jack Campbell's in that, look at that, first in the National Hockey League when he's not almost near the bottom. Leafs were ranked 20th, and, and yet Sheldon Keefe the other day said, I like our penalty killing. A little surprising uh, because of the ranking, but when you break it down with Campbell and Net, that would have been ranked number one in the league. Without Jack Campbell, they were. 29. So the old cliche about your best penalty killer is your goaltender. Yeah. What's the case? Very true. And you remember this stat of where he played. He only played in three of the first 31 games. So it started getting a little bit better. They were 92% over their last 10 games. And that was mainly with that man in net. So for Sheldon Keefe, hoping that continues here to start this season. Big penalty kill. Ongoing for Toronto, an important power play for the Canadians looking to equalize as Suzuki sends it in and around it goes to Gallagher. Watched by Ingball. Now Tyler Toffoli. Toffoli was seven power play goals last year. Old Caulfield. Petrie. Caulfield. Off a skate. And Campbell. Had to be sharp on that. Redirect with him coming across. And there's Gallagher trying to follow it up as Campbell gives a tap to Jake Muzzin on the reaction he had. And it's one of those quick plays, just get the puck to the front of the net, and Campbell on the deflection had to react quickly. A little kick out there by Toffoli, but puck never gets to Toffoli, and Campbell tries to clear it, but now he's in a good position. Caulfield's trying to slide this one all the way across. It hits Suzuki, and it's just a little awkward play for Campbell, but he's tight to the post and able to hold on, and then Gallagher gets a little bit of a flash in there, and 
on the doorstep is Jake Muzzin to try to take care of him. Brendan Gallagher and the Canadians in Buffalo tomorrow. The Maple Leafs will be in Ottawa. Drew M and Petrie. Petrie with that great start last year. First half, Gamble kicks that Armia shot away. Side of the net, and that's Hall finding it and getting it out to center. Under seven and a half minutes remaining here in the third period. 20 seconds left in the Nylander penalty. Montreal with four shots on goal the man advantage, but turned it over at the line there, and Camp stopping the entry. B3 sends it in. That's an icing against this Canadian's power play with three seconds left in the Nylander minor. Now it starts to get a little frustrating here, and this has been a first game for this line, the Suzuki line, where they haven't really been able to find their open ice. We saw one chance where Caulfield was looking for a quick shot on the power play. He fell down. Suzuki hasn't been able to control the puck as we've seen so often. It's been a bit, a bit of a frustrating first game for this top line. Well, the Canadians 0 for 4 on the power play tonight. This Elander back on the ice. 0 for 3 in this third period. There's Nylander, the difference of the game. Knocked off his stick by Petrie. Got it back again. Nylander on the backhand. Can't get it to the net. And then crunched along the boards. Tavares back to Sandine. Shot wide. Now Dermott plays it towards the corner. And Suzuki to the line. Not out. Now it comes out. Ben Chirot's going to lead the charge. Rasmus Sandin lost it there. Perot on the fourth check, but Spencer to the line, not out. David Savard, the rock shot, blocked by Spencer. Savard sends it deep. Luckinen behind the net. Puck hits in front. Luckinen taken off the puck with Savard across. Here's a Montreal push it even strength, and that bounce wide. And there is Hunting to send it down the ice. Rolling puck, and not enough for racing. Under six to go in the third. There's a key shift by Spezza. He does a great job of coming across and blocking a shot, and then chases down an ice and gets there to wave it off. Here's Jake Evans. Hit the official, and Kerfoot scoops it back for Hall. That block by Hall with the Leafs down five on three is going to be one of the big plays of the night. If this score stands. Up off Engball and deep and Kerfoot first to it. Allen didn't see him coming until the last second and now will hold on to it. The defensive play by Jason Spezza. Way now in Edmonton, the Canucks and the Oilers kicking off their seasons on Sportsnet and Sportsnet now. Simultaneously down in California, the Winnipeg Jets and the Anaheim Ducks gets things rolling. We have that one for you on Sportsnet 1 and Sportsnet 360. Chris. Thank you, Kyle. 2-1 here with 5.19 on the clock. Shots are 10 for Montreal in the third with those three power plays for William Nylander. The lone goal scorer in this third period so far. Tavares won a face off. Muzzin plays it into the slot. It brought Barter. And a big stop there by Allen. Keeping it a one goal game. Shot blocked by Sherratt in off the glass and out. There's another example of Richie going to the front of the net. He ties up the defenseman, and that rebound is there for Marner because that battle is going on. We're going to play that role with that line. That's exactly what you need to do. Gallagher took a run at Muzzin, and Muzzin uh, got the license plate as that deflects onto the netting. Another good chance for Marner in tight, and Allen able to make the save. This is a faceoff that is a second chance win there by Tavares. And look at the battle in front as you got a stick battle going there with Savard, and that allows Marner to come in all alone. That's a huge save by Marner and a few. Jabs back and forth as 
as you mentioned, you play the same team so many times, you got to get pretty tired of seeing the guy next to you. On this face-off, Suzuki able to get control for the Canadians. The centering play doesn't work. So Foley now to the near side corner. Suzuki against Brody and the Leafs able to dump it out. Tyler to Foley get it, it organized and now Kulak backtracks. Paired with Petrie to start the season. Kulak rifles it in. Kerfoot come up, comes up with it. An outlet to punting and off the boards and out. 404 left in the third. Petrie with 25 points in the first 27 games last year. He was legitimately a leading Norris candidate for the first half of last season. Armia back to Weidman. Weidman plays it off the glass and it comes down for Gallagher. And Armia, Gallagher in front! Great save, Campbell and Gallagher bumped into him at the end of the play, but it's as tough a stop as Jack Campbell's made tonight. Yeah, that one almost went underneath the arm. It's just a quick reaction by Campbell as he came out enough to get a piece of it. Quick hands by Gallagher to get that one away. Anderson back in, shot is blocked. Anderson in behind the net, watched by Hall, taken down by Hall. And Ritchie with an outlet for Marner at center. It's Marner, the rat, perhaps more than any other leaf in the aftermath of the first round. But a big cheer when he was introduced tonight to start the evening. And Anderson taken down, looked at the official. No call coming up. Then Girard, pass picked off at center by Nylander. He'll flip it back in as the Leafs complete a change. Bunting on the four check. Girard around for Caulfield. Up ahead neatly to Toffoli and Suzuki's loose. Nick Suzuki and he just missed. Far side and that puck did come out and offside. As Girard just a split second late. But we've seen Suzuki score from that spot more than a few times. We have and you've seen Gallagher in this kind of environment too he gives a shot to Campbell after Campbell able to find that quick release this is down on your knees just trying to get it to the net it went underneath the arm but out the other side and you know that sometimes you just can't resist you got to give a little bit of shot there where Suzuki was able to score in the playoffs was down low underneath the blocker that one a little high and wide off Andre Kasha at the end there's Ingball after it for the Maple Leafs but Canadians are able to work it back out to center. Suzuki back to Petrie. Changes underway for the Canadians and under two minutes remaining. So we'll watch for Jake Allen to go to the bench for an extra attacker. Gallagher's on the move as he chases it down, but I think that hit the curve glass at the lead pitch and play stopped and Gallagher going to get some attention. And Morgan Riley in the fray. Yeah, if you're the Leafs, you're trying to nurse this one goal. Might be giving Montreal another chance here. Is there are times with Gallagher, you just can't help yourself. You want to get your shot in, but that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get under your skin. It's in response to the little shot to Campbell. And you know Campbell can handle himself in that. And it'll be interesting to see. Gordon Dwyer, Chris, is the referee who's been pointing adamantly in can't tell whether he's got both or just one. Well, it looks like Josh Anderson going off at least one. Yeah, he looked like he was emphatic. There's how it started the shift before as Gallagher can't believe he gets that one. But a two minute rough here as Gallagher gets the little shot. Where does Anderson come in? Right there at the end. So that's where Gord Dwyer just Reacting to Anderson making this thing continue on. There's a whole lot of pushing and shoving and hacking and whacking, but only one called, and you could tell how Anderson and Gallagher feel about that. You often see one taken 
early in the game, but with under two minutes to go in a one-goal game, not as often. No, and I, I was saying for the Leafs, with the one-goal lead, don't give the official the opportunity to make that kind of call. Don Ducharme saying, how did we end up with one? But you saw the most aggressive guy coming in after was Anderson, and that's where the call was made. I don't think he likes it. Dominic Ducharme asking who started it. See now on the back end as expected with a minute 47. TJ Brody and Riley and no four forwards. Keep the second defenseman there to be a little bit cautious. Nylander does play up along with Marner and Tavares as they win the face off. Leaps one for two on the power play tonight. And it's TJ Brody. Riley firing a right on rebound. Tavares and Allen with two more stops. In that tight slot, that's one thing Allen's been able to battle pretty hard. The rebounds have been there a few times, and this is one where just focused on getting it past the defenseman Petrie and get it to the front of the net, and Allen able to get that second shot by Tavares. John Tavares in the offensive zone faceoffs tonight, 11 and 1, but Suzuki gets him that time. Riley holds it in, whipped it high over the line, but. Comes down for Marner, and the bull is going to take it away. And back come the Canadians, and up comes Allen. And a centering play by Petrie doesn't work. Ben Chirac, the extra man, is Cole Caulfield, and he fanned on that. And again, empty net. Riley couldn't pull the trigger to fire it down the ice. Chirac at the point. Here's Caulfield. Minute to go in the third period. It's Petrie and a club stopped by Jack Campbell. Not surprising as soon as the puck came out of the zone, it gone to the bench was Allen. And remember, this is a Montreal team that scored more shorthanded goals last year than anyone. They had nine during the regular season, four in their run to the Stanley Cup final. And here all Petrie is trying to do is find someone to get a tip in front to Foley a little bit too far, wasn't able to get a piece of that one. Timeout's been called. And Dominic Ducharme and Alex Burroughs will draw something up to the Montreal pitch. Timeout, Montreal. You got to be thinking not only of what do you do when you win the draw if you're Montreal, but you're also thinking when you lose it, who's pressuring to try to get control? You know, so often you're able to keep a play alive in the offensive zone like this by winning the loss. So that's one of the conversations as well. Toronto's won 60% of the faceoffs tonight. Dvorak 14 and 13 for Montreal. See here again, David Camp has played a significant role, almost four minutes of penalty kill time in this game for the Leafs. It is Suzuki, and he wins the faceoff. Along the boards, Hall comes up with it. Now Muzzin up off the glass, and it bounces down. Pierre Engvall after it. Here's Engvall with the empty net. He has scored tonight. He's never scored two in a game. At least a regular season game he did in the preseason. And Engvall's got it down in the league, in the Canadian zone, knocked down by Suzuki as he helps drain the clock. And now a couple dozen seconds remaining. Leafs trying to hem the Canadians in. And now Muzzin strides back ahead of Dvorak. Up for Engvall, looking for the empty net, and he missed the target. And it's an icing call with 12.1 to go. Now that's a play you, you didn't need to make there. And you got to be wary of it, although Montreal's already taken their time out, so they don't get a break here to try to organize things. But this is one, did he just panic or not realize? I mean, that's one that you got 13 seconds to skate with it a little bit, put it off, and this game's over. Last opportunity for the Canadians from the drop. Montreal's got it. Here's Caulfield off the boards. Lost to Petrie right on. Rebound for Armia. And the clock drains, and the Leafs have hung on. And they'll win the season opener on the ice. From 
Pierre Engvall go to Jack Campbell and say a big thank you. 12 seconds, there it is, the head bonk as Campbell makes a great late save to keep this a 2-1 game as the icing almost created a good chance for Montreal. Josh Anderson still upset about the penalty call in the late stages of the game. Jack Campbell in his first ever season opening start makes 31 stops. The 2-1 Toronto win. William Nylander with the game winner. So long from Scotiabank. Here's